Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. Today we're at uh, Cumulo's offices in uh, Seattle, Washington. One of the things that uh, occurs uh, that when we're talking to IT professionals is the cloud and, and how their unstructured data strategy will work in the cloud and if it makes sense for them. Joining me on the light board is Joel Bruin. He is the director of cloud go-to-market at Cumulo. Joel, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, George. So why don't we talk about a little bit about this. Uh, what makes Cumulo work well in the cloud? Yeah, so as you can see here, we've got four areas that really kind of set us apart. And when we help customers figure out their journey to the cloud, uh -huh. oftentimes we're dealing in these four areas. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about each of these. Let's do it. Let's talk about software. Then. Okay, yeah. So first, obviously, uh, Cumulo builds world-class storage software. What makes us different is when you run us in a data center, uh, you're running our software that goes through our full build process. When you run us in one of the public clouds, that exact same software is running in both places. So what's really powerful, if I, if I draw for you uh, just a data center, we've got Cumulo running here, and then a version of us running in the cloud, the ability for us to move data back and forth between those two, really powerful. Well, and I guess a key thing is that you guys don't count on proprietary hardware anywhere, right? And that, that kind of breaks a lot of guys that are trying to transition into the cloud, right? Yeah, when you fundamentally are a Linux-based application, you can run on x86 hardware, you can run a virtualized version of that in your data center, and obviously the clouds for us to port up to the cloud, it, it's not trivial because you want to integrate as deeply with the services that that cloud provider offers but we do have that ability to give you really that full cloud experience with the exact same software. You're looking at the same UI, you get all of the same goodness that you would get if you were running a senior data center. I think that's really an important point too because I, I see a lot of people, they end up building like this whole nother silo of storage to manage in the cloud. Right? Exactly. It's, it's like defeats the whole purpose, yeah. right? Yeah. And maybe more importantly is here, helping you move the data back and forth. There are times we have customers that want to run entire workloads up into the cloud and we help them do that. Some people want to move data back and forth and sure. use the elasticity of the cloud to really take advantage of what's there. And so our ability to help you with data movement makes that transition easier. And some people are making the full lift and shift migration and we can obviously help you do that as well. Okay, great. So that, that takes out software. What's yeah. uh, enterprise? So back to this concept, if you've run workloads in your data center for a month, a year, or a decade, you've got certain things that your users are used to having in front of them. And maybe they're human user users, maybe they're computer users, but there's certain things that they need. So the ones we see the most of our customers that want help uh, to migrate workloads into the cloud uh, start with some of the things that we're great about on-prem. So we start with analytics. When you're in the cloud, you really need to know what's going on. If you have a workflow that's not performing or something breaks, the sooner you know that, especially when you're running like on an hourly basis, you're sure. running a big job against a huge compute farm, knowing that in real time really adds value. And so they've come to really trust that we can give them that real time okay. data. Yeah, you don't want to get to the end of the job and then find out, right? Exactly. Yeah, I mean, sense. the power of the cloud is that really heavy compute. And if you're not taking advantage of that because something broke along the way, the sooner you know that, the better. Makes sense. Yeah. So then the next one is protocols. And it seems simple. Everybody has protocols. The, the real difference is, again, when you've done enough uh, mixed protocol workloads for customers in the data center, being able to do that in the cloud is so powerful. Honestly, most of the offerings that you see in the public cloud today, whether it's the native one provided by the cloud service provider or the other third parties that are up there, usually are single protocol offerings. Right. And so our ability to have things like RFC 2307, where you can write it over Windows and read it over Linux and keep all of the permissions and all of that craziness that we've built up over time and just automatically get that for free in the cloud becomes really, really powerful. I would also think it would make the transition easier, okay? Because it's just not one more thing that you have to change, right? Yeah, think about just taking your app as is moving it up into the cloud and it just works. Right. Yeah. That's one of the really powerful things. Makes sense. Yeah. So then the next one is uh, is identity. And sometimes this could be this could be uh, auth or other types of firms, but we're really talking about sometimes you've got a bunch of work happening up here in the cloud, mm -hmm. but your active directory system lives down here or part of it is made it to the cloud, but not all of it. Okay. So our deep integration with active, active directory and LDAP 
and really allowing you to take some of those on-prem types of workloads and just natively run them in the cloud really, really helps. And, and again, I think that's a conversion thing, right? It's yes. not like a broken record because yeah. now I don't have to worry about set, setting up something new in the cloud, right? Yeah, we spend a lot of time and energy helping customers make it as easy as possible to make that migration. It's very seldom that you just shut everything down, move it all up and restart it. You have this long migration that can take years and years for some companies and the ability to live in both worlds really, really helps them keep keep productive while they're making that transition. Okay. So Joel, we've talked about software and enterprise capabilities. Let's talk about scale and scale in the cloud. How's that work? Yeah, one of the really powerful things about the cloud, obviously, and the, one of the things Cumulo is uniquely positioned to take advantage of is capacity and performance. So we are famous for being a scale out file storage provider, sure. which means when you buy additional capacity, uh, you get additional performance. So the line looks something like this. You right. add more nodes, you get more capacity, and with that comes more and more and more performance. Yeah, makes sense. In the cloud, one of the really powerful things is you can scale performance and capacity independent of one another. Okay. So if you start here in the data center, you are on a track to go this way. Right. But in the cloud, using Cumulo, you can jump from here but I, I need uh, more capacity, but my performance is fine, you can jump to here. Or okay. if you want to just hop up performance because you have a really performant workload, but sure. your data set is going to stay the same, you can jump to here. Those are both entirely possible. We help customers do that. And that, again, that elasticity of being able to find uh, the infrastructure to match your workload, really, really powerful. That's really interesting because like we talked earlier about uh, processing jobs and things like that. If, if it's a job where you need, just need to get something done really quick, you could just throw a, a bunch of processors at it and get the job done fast, right? Yeah, HPC types of work, whether that be in media and entertainment or, or one of the other industries where we have lots of customers, sometimes the more compute you can throw at something, the faster you can get it done, it really, really helps. And so you start climbing this curve and you end up getting stuff done in you know hours instead of days. Wow, that's really cool. All right, so I, I think the big one here is uh, is keeping all this uh, easy and, and relatively uh, simple to manage, right? Because all this stuff is growing, but IT staffs aren't. So uh, how do you guys make this easy for people? Yeah, so we do a couple of things. So one is just if you've ever seen RUI, we make it really, really straightforward for people. We give people all kinds of tools in the cloud as well from uh, Terraform scripts and other ways to just automatically deploy. We've had customers discover Cumulo, identify the problem, and have file storage up and running in less than two minutes, which is just unheard of yeah. in, in the on-prem world. Again, the power of the cloud is that ability to just go really fast, solve a problem. And so our ease of use, just dealing with Cumulo as a company, um, we make it really easy for customers to figure out what they need to move, how they want to move it, and get as productive as they can in the cloud as soon as they can. And, and I would also think that that analytics that you guys have really had built in, I think, since we started covering you, that's got to pay off big time in the cloud too, right? Absolutely. And one of the things that you don't see is, if you've seen our UI, you see lots of analytics, but all of those are available via the APIs as well. Okay. So right. you can you can entirely... Uh, hook us up into your existing systems and just have Cumulo report and give you visibility in a way that works best for you. Lots of times people in the cloud don't ever see our UI. Wow. They build it, they use it, they monitor it, all of that stuff just done with API calls. And again, one of those things that sets us apart. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So, uh, Joel, before we wrap up uh, here, why don't you tell us a little bit of uh, some detail on Cumulo and, and what this guy is. Yeah, so this is the Grump Quat. He's uh, he is our mascot. He has been around since the early early days. Okay. Uh, he has lived uh, in a fairly vanilla state like this, or you could see him dressed in a variety of different outfits um, to suit the occasion. He, he does stay remarkably still. Yeah, yeah, he's he's very disciplined. Yeah, he is there to make sure that. Uh, we stay focused on the customer. Okay. So he, he keeps us pointed at True North, which is making sure we're delighting our customers. And we had mentioned you guys have been around for a little while. Why don't you talk a little bit about Cumulo itself? Yeah, so we're in our seventh year and uh, we're growing really fast right now. We've got hundreds of customers and uh, we are deep into this uh, stage in unstructured data where the on-premise world and the cloud world start to come together, uh, and we love helping customers figure out what works best for them. 
And uh, for those that are ready to move up for whatever reason, uh, we love to help them be successful in that journey. Yeah, that makes sense. I, you yeah. know, it's funny, I've been at this long time. When I first started in the industry, it was all about databases and things like that. And now it's all about unstructured data. So it guys, is about unstructured data. Yeah. That's a good place to be. You guys are in the right market. Yeah. So uh, I'm George Crump, lead analyst for Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today.